Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm here on a Saturday afternoon. The shop is closed and I'm actually not here to work on a scooter, motorcycle, or ATV. Uh, but what I am here to work on is essential to the shop and that is this vintage record player. So let's get started. So this is the record player I have selected for the shop. It's a bit of a family heirloom. It was my great uncle's record player and my uncle recently gave it to me. Um, and I brought it down here to the shop because I'm a big vinyl fan and we always have music playing here and it would be great to put on a record to jam instead of just streaming something off of an internet service. Um, so this definitely fits the, the bill. It has great vibes. It's an old Philips. Uh, so you know it's a quality piece, it's got a nice cartridge in it too. Um, I have plugged it in and noticed it does nothing at all. But I don't think that it's going to be too complicated to repair. Things were kind of meant to be repaired back in this day and uh, there's no way this is more complex than a twin independent variable cam timing engine and I've put a lot of those together. So uh, first thing we're going to do is I'll, I'll plug it in and show that uh, nothing happens. You can see I've got my little speed selector here and then uh, this is the on and off switch and it has the needle drop so um, we'll just kind of move it over here and turn it on and you get nothing. No sound, uh, the platter doesn't move. The platter is free but it doesn't really do anything. Let's do a little bit of a dive and and see if we can see visually something if the capacitor has exploded or something has come unsoldered. All right, so I think this top cover lifts off if you're real ginger. There we go. And we have like a rubber mat here. This whole platter is like uh, on some kind of spring mechanism. You can see the, the tone arm is moving when I move this. This must be like stability if you had someone jumping around in your apartment. You know, maybe your record wouldn't skip. And then some kind of goofy spring here. If it does much of anything. And we're in. Well, the first thing I see is there's like the remnants of a belt here. Let me let me take you in close for that one. You can see it, it deteriorated over the years and it, it fell down. It's actually kind of like ah, it's kind of like RTV. It's really stuck to the motor and very sticky. Uh, but it looks like it just went through the motor here. Oh, the motor's buzzing actually. So maybe this motor works. Let's turn it on. Ah, oh, there you go. Motor works. And then this is my, okay, so this is the, uh, the speed selector, whether you're gonna run a 33 or a 45. And it looks like that just takes the belt and moves it up and down on these pulleys. It's got a small pulley on top and a large pulley on the bottom. So yeah, small pulley. 33 RPM, and it turns the platter. Cool. All right, so first part of the diag's done. The motor's good, so we don't have any sort of electrical issue with that circuit. Um, but we do need to get a belt. This looks kind of like a big, like a big O-ring. Uh, this looks like a round profile here in the pulley. So I wonder if I uh, just threw a a large o-ring on this thing if we could get the turntable moving. All right, asking you shall receive. We're in a shop full of o-rings. This is a, uh, a GY6 valve cover gasket o-ring. Um, and it looks to be like pretty close to the right size. So let's see if it goes on there. That's not exactly the right shape. You know, I, you'd probably want a round one, but this will at least tell us if, you know, the thing is gonna work or not. Uh, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's like binding or anything. <laughs> there you go. Turntable. I'm going to take some time and clean up all this old uh, belt residue here. And then uh, we'll throw the turntable back on and see if it plays.
All right, so I got the old belt remnants cleaned off this thing as best as I could. Uh, looks pretty good in there. So we'll throw the old GY6 valve cover gasket turntable belt back on here and uh, plug her in and see if she uh, see if she plays some sweet sweet music. Nice. You know, I'm I'm starting to think like I was gonna order a new belt for this model. But I think the Juju is much better if I'm just using the GY6 valve cover. I mean, what, what better part could go in a shop record player than a scooter part, right? Throw the rubber on it. All right, let's put a record on it, see what it does. All right, so I got the old turntable up here on the service counter where I hope it will live. Uh, we've got it wired into the phono function on our shop stereo. And uh, all there is to do now is to find a record to put on. Figure today's selection, we would do a throwback. This is actually the uh, first vinyl record I was ever recorded on. Uh, this is a band I used to play with back in the day, Kev Bev Collins and the Woodland Creatures. And uh, you know, a lot of the characters uh, on this album cover made it onto the channel. Uh, there's Kai Chao Lao, uh, famous from the Kai Rola series. Uh, there's Adriano Yero, who uh, did all my drum work on my opening theme music and was the uh, designer of all my merch here. He did all that artwork. So, you know, kind of appropriate for the channel. So let's throw on, this is our first record we made as a band, Domesticated. All right, here goes nothing. an issue. So the problem is I know that this record is not spinning at 33 RPM. Uh, it's definitely going too fast. The, the song, that intro song, sounds too fast and I know that this song was in the key of A. I was playing tuba on this track and uh, that's definitely not A. I don't have perfect pitch uh, but I have enough memorized pitch that I know when something is not where it should be. Well here let me show you. I'll take you to the shop piano and show you where it should be. All right, so so that song is in the key of A minor. So the tuba part is here, right? That's what should be playing. And let's let's see what's playing on the record real quick. I'll put it back on. Bom uh, bom. All right, so let's go back. See what key it's actually playing in. Mm -hmm. It's playing in B. So we're a, we're a whole step up where we should be. I don't know how many RPMs that's gonna translate to, but I know that's not right. So, back inside, let's see if we can figure out why this thing's playing too fast. I've got the platter off. Um, there's no like uh, phase adjustment on the motor. Like, you know, a lot of turntables will have like a fine-tuned speed control with like a strobe or something so you can get it precise. Uh, this unfortunately doesn't. So we're gonna have to flip it over. Oh, and I uh, asked, uh, asked some help. I'm not super big on electronics. I, I know enough to be dangerous, uh, but I asked my friend Gary Stanley uh, to come take a look at this with us. So maybe he can shed some light on what we might need to do to get this thing running right. So uh, say hi to the camera, Gary. Hey guys. <laughs> can't see me. I'm here. I promise. He's here. <laughs> All right, so we have a couple screws on the bottom here. Oh, man, this thing is made in France. So you know it's going to be weird. It's like working on a Peugeot. So now what happens? It comes off this way? Okay. Okay, so here is what we're looking at. We switch it on, we have contactors, and what is it? This is a big capacitor, Gary? What is mm -hmm. this? Big old capacitor. Okay. Uh, yeah. And that that is part of the main switch here, because you see that mechanism move. This is your 
tone arm down and up. And there is no speed control on this thing. It's really, really, really basic. Is this another capacitor? What, what we got going on? Oh uh, yeah, I see microfarads in there. Yeah. Zero zero point one eight. Mm -hmm. So oh yeah okay so this is so this is a dual winding motor. We've got four four wires controlling running the motor uh, out of the two. This is like right off the wall, right into the motor. Simple. Couldn't be simpler. Let's do a little bit of reading and come back. Okay, and we're back. Uh, apparently the way that this, this whole system works is you have an AC motor and you have these two leads coming out of the wire, which of course are supplying 110 volts at 60 hertz if your wall circuit is working. And then tied off of that is this capacitor and that, I guess, shifts the phase of the second winding in the motor. So there's a first winding that's running at 60 hertz and by shifting the phase, it controls the direction and the, uh, and the speed, apparently. I don't really quite understand it, but it sounds right. I guess, I don't know, are we gonna solder a new capacitor? What do you think? Or well, I think we should be able to test the capacitance of that, see if it's in spec. Oh, okay. So this says 0 0.18, 250 volt AC, and then it has a part number. So let's uh, get the meter, I guess, and check its capacitance. Yeah, capacitors are always, uh you know, points of problems, especially uh, depending on the area it was made. All right, so we've got the old meter out. Uh, we've got her set on capacitance, and uh, we're just gonna see if this capacitor is out of spec. Yeah, I think uh, technically, if you were getting real specific, you'd wanna pull it out of circuit to oh. test, but I think we'll be fine testing just like this. Okay, so it looks like we've got 1.10 microfarads, I think. And then what's this way? I don't think it should read this side the other way. Oh, well, there you go. It doesn't read the other way. Oh, actually, I'm getting a different reading now. I'm getting 9.62. Uh, okay. Strange. Still, hmm. but there again, I think that's auto ranging, so. Oh, you're right. Um, is it 9.62 or is it 0.09? I have no idea. This is a part of the meter I never go to. I, you know, I live on this AC-DC part of the <laughs> part of the meter. No kidding. Uh, okay. Is it possible that it's bad and it's changing that value, or is it? For sure, it could be. Um, let's say holding different amounts of electricity te technically. So the pixies. The pixies, you know, man. What are the pixies doing? You gotta make sure them guys are happy. We need a capacitor that's. 0 0.18 microfarads, correct? That's what it looks like, yeah. All right, well, and rated for 250 volts. Well, let's, uh, let's see if we can find one. All right, and we're back. We uh, sourced a few capacitors that I hope will do the trick. Let's see, this is a uh, 0 0.18 microfarads rated for 450 volts. I'm hoping this will go. I'm, now that I see it, it's a little bit small. <laughs> I hope that we can... I hope that we can like bend this out and make it work. I can definitely make that work, Gary. Um, so I guess like, uh, let's test this one and see. Yeah, what we should expect. Okay, so we got on this puppy, 185. So, oh yeah, that's like 0.18 because it's auto ranging, yeah. Yeah. All right, let me get the old soldering iron heated up and we'll be right back. So step one is gonna be to unsolder this here, so. This is some, some ancient solder. I hope she comes right apart. But then old solder is also a different formula that usually takes a little higher temp. Mm. I've, got my, I've got my throttle to the max here, so yeah. maybe I'll try and get it wet with a little extra fresh solder maybe. Oh yeah, there we go. Starting to get somewhere. There we go, just like you said. Magic, Gary, magic. All right, we have the same thing going on here, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's looped through. So, we might have to wet this one too with a little bit of a, some fresh solder to get her started. Watch out for that wire. Oh, dang. Gotta be careful with my torch angle here. Should I get some flux? Um, it probably helps. It's a little dab. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. 
got our lovely neighbors. Yeah, it sounds like the neighbors figured out their stereo situation. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right, we're free. Got her. Got her out. There we go. That was a nice solder. I forget about that. I guess that's it, huh? Mm -hmm, mm hmm So uh, I don't know. Let's see if she. Uh, let's see if we made a difference. See if it runs better. If it runs worse, you know what happens. It runs it all. <laughs> it runs it all. Yeah. Let's hope it runs it all. All right. We'll be back. All right, Gary. Moment of truth. Let's see if she still spins, or did we mess something up? Waiting on bated breath. Okay, it's spinning. Oh, it's the correct direction too, so we didn't mess something up terribly if we mess anything up at all. So uh, we'll throw the platter on it, throw the record back on, and see where she is. Ah, so sounds fast. Definitely fast. Still in the key of B. This is uh, still too fast, so back to the drawing board. All right, we're back in the shop. It's another Saturday, about a week later. I've went ahead and ordered the correct belt for my turntable. And in the time waiting for this belt to arrive, I had a lot of time to reflect on, you know, the pitfalls that I kind of fell into. And they're the same pitfalls I see my customers fall into, and the same pitfalls that I try and uh, create videos to help people get out of, and uh, that is getting really excited or, or getting in your head that the issue is coming from one direction instead of like taking a more scientific approach, creating a hypothesis, testing it, and moving in a, in a really logical direction from there. Uh, now, of course, you know, I was really excited when the turntable was, was turning, and I couldn't imagine that you know, what would be making it turn faster other than that capacitor being out of spec. And of course we did test the capacitor and it was out of spec, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it was the issue. And uh, I kind of ignored something that we in the industry call state of tune, uh, where you need to make sure that all the components are up to par before you really start uh, troubleshooting. You need to control your variables, as they say, right? So. Uh, I had the variable of a, a GY6 valve cover O-ring for a belt. Now, and I was uh, taking that for being as good as the, the stock belt for this thing instead of thinking like, well, that could be causing issues otherwise. Because it, just, it worked, it, it didn't slip, it you know, fit right in the pulley. You know, the pulley has a little round groove in it, and so it really made sense to me. But on closer observation uh, with this factory belt, I can notice that it is one, it's a lot thinner than a GY6 um, O-ring and also it's square. Like if you look at the cross section, it's, it's actually square all the way around. Um, so and that's definitely going to fit into that pulley a lot different. And it's also a little ironic that this got the best of me here in a scooter shop where I spend so much of my time, you know, figuring out how to make a belt go around a pulley the best way possible. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to throw the old uh, factory belt on this bad boy and I'm hoping that that is actually going to correct my speed issue. Get the platter off first. Luckily all this is really easy to get to and I can see now, I mean side by side these these belts are like not even close. Let me get this on there. That, that's interesting, the, the belt actually rotates 90 degrees as it engages this pulley. So it really sits down inside this pulley quite a bit. Man, maybe the pulley is a V. Let me bring you in and show you what I'm talking about. All right, you can really see it here. You know, the belt, of course, has a side, a flat side, riding around the flat part of this pulley. And then, as it goes around, the belt rotates like this before it feeds into the pulley. It actually, it kind of reminds me of like a vacuum cleaner drive belt or even like a, uh, the fan belt off a of Chevy Corvair. It really does a kind of a weird twist. And uh, you know what? The more that I watch the way that this belt goes around, um, I think this is my speed issue. All right, let's put the platter back on it. The Luan platter. 
And let's throw our record back on here and see if she spins in the correct key. Sounds like it's grooving good. That's it, key of A. Yeah, I'm not a human metronome, so I, I can't really tell you if the tempo is dead on, but I know that's the key of A. And to prove it to you, back to the shop piano. So yeah, key of A. Nice, so looks like we got it resolved. Man, I'm gonna put that record back on. Cause there is nothing like Turning vinyl in a shop, man. Nice. All right, we'll save that Chris Brown keyboard solo for another day. And uh, let's just recap a couple things real quick over at the whiteboard. All right, so let's just talk for a second about why the correct drive belt was the exact fix my turntable needed. And uh, you guys are a scooter audience, so this is really gonna track right along. And I actually can't believe that I overlooked this. Uh, but basically, you know, just like a scooter transmission, you've got a drive pulley and a driven pulley. And you know, the driven pulley's output speed is uh, determined by two things. One, the speed of the drive pulley, and then also the ratio, right? So in our scooter variators, this pulley, the size of that pulley is adjustable, right? It's, it's a variator. You have, you know, drive faces that look like this, and the belt rides down here, and as the pulley comes together, right, uh, it starts to look like this, and then the belt rides up, and, you know, changing the effective size of that pulley. Well, this is pretty much the exact same thing that was going on with here. You know, say this is the, the drive pulley and this is the big pulley, right? We'll make it a little bigger. Uh, that drives my turntable platter. So my belt was coming down and it was only going about halfway around the pulley, right? So that means that this pulley was actually this size, you know? So the ratio of the size of this pulley to this pulley is gonna determine this output speed, right? And the belt itself being, you know, square shaped allowed it to kind of fit down in the V, say this is the pulley from like the side view, you know? It allowed the belt to fit all the way down into the pulley like that, you know? Wow, not the, my best artwork, but you get the idea. The new belt or the correct belt, you know, goes all the way down to like, you know, the very center of that pulley. So it's a much different drive ratio. And I guess that's about it. I am super excited to have a turntable here in the shop uh, to play some vinyl while we're back here working on all these bikes. Um, but this was also sort of a good, you know, vibe check for me to make sure that I'm approaching my problems with a logical mindset instead of just jumping in and getting excited. And, and you know, I'm also really excited that I got to learn a little bit about my record player and I'll be able to service it in the future. And I also got to learn a lot about AC motors and this way of controlling speed by using a capacitor. It might not be applicable to the next time I'm, you know, working on a, a Royal Enfield or something. Uh, but, you know, the knowledge doesn't go away. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. You know, leave a comment, tell me what you thought. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. You know, we're going to be creating a lot more content out of the shop, which I'm really excited about and I hope you guys are. We are getting back to the Tao Tao series. I know, I know. Every video I release that is not Tao Tao related, the comments are inundated. Wow, well, what's going on with the Tao Tao? What's going on? It's coming back, I promise. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, until we meet again, keep it shiny side up.